Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, 6th of September, 3.30pm in the UK, about half past 10 on the East Coast. Just wanted to take a quick look at a few charts, a little bit of an excerpt from one of my webinars, you could say. Uh, starting off here with Silver Daily, we've seen some really good moves in the precious metals recently. And uh, I just wanted to point it out here how I've been watching Silver drift down from the warning line and finding support along the median line of the fork here. That's the middle line there. You can see prior support there, prior to this strong move up. Uh, in about four or five days to the warning line we drifted sideways we've come back down where did we find support right here along the median line uh, gonna move from there have a quick look at gold on a 240 everyone likes uh, to see what's been going on here and uh, Got a couple of forks on the go here you can see if I move out very slightly the blue fork to the upside resistance resistance price started to move down so we've been looking at the blue fork but recently we've been tracking price using the red fork uh, and you can see we've got a high a low a high up here we've got resistance all the way along the lines here um, we just pushed above resistance sliding parallel that kept it in check very nicely there there and then when we had the non-farm that then we had a spike up to that and then again non-farm payrolls uh, interesting thing here it hit resistance along this sliding parallel but also look at the support in the line of the blue fork you can see the line of the blue fork if i just copy that line down there you can see absolutely we caught it once twice there so what am i looking at at the moment let me just expand this a little bit more uh the lower parallel of the fork that's the blue line Across here it was resistant it was support here resistance price pushed above it hit the green sliding parallel price came back down where did it find support once more along the uh, lower parallel and we started to slide up because of this raised support from down here to up here that was enough to take us through the green down sloping resistance and prices moved strongly to the upside from that now as always it's Everything is to do with the dollar. So I'm just going to switch over, have a quick look at the dollar on a daily basis. Um, and, well, you can see, I've got to say it's a little bit messy here. We've, we've got nice support along the lower parallel. So a good bounce there uh, at the end of August. We've got resistance along the sliding parallel here. Just forgetting about the, uh, the red fork for the time being, just looking at the blue. Uh, and price at the moment is working its way down. Uh, I think, if anything, it's probably a little bit easier to look at in terms of the euro which is very much the uh, the the anti-dollar if you want um, and here it's very obvious what's been going on the lower parallel of the fork was support back in march it was support again back in june and then price moved up fell down beneath the fork and when it came back up again that line that was prior support became resistance that happened in july and again a little bit messy in august but look we've moved back down again and where do we find support again in the line of the fork you know th these angles are consistent look at the sliding parallel there look at the sliding parallel resistance across there and you can see this quite clearly the the euro the anti-dollar if you will we, we've got support there we've been down there for four or five days and we've now got to move from what 11.36 up to 12.30 i mean nearly 100 points up from there so continue to watch that and also continue to watch what's happening with the dollar in terms of that as well another thing i've been watching is the is sterling in uh, on the 60 minute chart and this chart again has been running very very nicely uh, we've had resistance along the median line of the fork once twice that's that's pretty close i've got to say three times there we've had support in the line of the fork there We've had it across here. You can see these lines are working. Uh, and literally in the last few minutes on, on this single bar, and this is a one hour bar, we've pushed through the median line. Uh, and I've been tweeting about that. I've been talking about that for a few days, I think. Um, also just potentially we've got a reverse head and shoulders. You can see we've got a shoulder, a head, a shoulder. And of course I'm looking at the neckline as the median line. I'm not looking at it as a horizontal. I don't really look at horizontals that often. Uh, I'm looking at the neckline in terms of the angle of the fork. I just had a quick email from somebody asking me if I would go and have a look at the Dow Jones. Uh, this is the Dow on a daily basis. Um, and again, looking at it, analyzing it in terms of a pitchfork, which I think really helps uh, a lot. You can see the moves are pretty much characterized within the fork from down here, this low at 15.4. Where did we go? We moved up to the median line of the fork, 18,000. So a sizable move there. We kind of meandered across. We had a strong dip. Where did we find support? 
bang on the median line again and up we moved. The one thing that I've been uh, saying for a little while about the Dow is that we do seem to be losing a little bit of power within terms of the fork. Whereas we hit resistance at the median line there, we bounced. When we came up here, yeah, in terms of the horizontal, we're above it. But look, if we were to maintain strength within the fork, we'd be hitting resistance at the median line. We haven't done that. We're a little bit lower. And, and in fact, this sliding parallel really covers the, uh, that shows the resistance quite well. And now we're actually drifting away from that. We're really drifting a little bit lower. We're not even getting up to the resistance of this sliding parallel. So if you're bullish the Dow, what, what do you want to see? Well, this sliding parallel that goes back to February has been support. Yeah, there was a dip through it there, but look, support, support. You really want to see this uh, maintaining its support here. And what do you want to see? You want to see a, a rejection from that. You want to see price pushing up. You want it to at least hit up here, 19.1, 19.130, somewhere like that, which is the which is consistent resistance. Anything lower than that, any lower resistance, and that's not good news for the Dow. I mean, in fact, what you really want is you want to see uh, price getting up here at 19.6, 19.7, depending where it is, uh, when, when, if and when it does get there. Uh, at the moment, the lowered resistance from here down to this sliding parallel, and now we're not even reaching that. That just makes me wonder a little bit about the uh, wh wh whether the green sliding parallel here is going to be able to maintain support. Just going to move, have a quick look at the DAX as well as that's been running very nicely. Um, I don't really have to say too much about this. Once we draw the fork in, we give the movements in price a bit of context. You've got sliding parallel resistance across there. It hit it once, a little bit furry there, but what the heck. Pushed above it, you could think of that as a shoulder, a head, a shoulder. We did go down. We found support again in the line of the fork. Up we come again, we hit resistance, and now we've come back down. We're finding support along the quartile. Quartile worked a little bit back here, it hadn't been great beforehand, but now looking to see if we can build a little bit of support there. If we do move up, obviously looking at this sliding parallel here as resistance. Um, if price falls away again, we're going to be looking for the quartile to provide continued support. And I'm just going to move on from there, going to look at just one other. Uh, vehicle and that is Turkish Lira uh, looking at this again on a daily basis as we're, we're in a quite an interesting situation here you can see look price has more or less been moving sideways but using a fork using the context that the pitchfork gives us what we find is uh, far more nuance far more uh, information coming out from the price we've got resistance along the lower parallel once twice three times four times here where we found support along the warning line once, twice, three, four, five, six. Um, I've been a little bit wary. I think I tweeted about that this morning. Price does seem to be dipping through that. Reasons for it, a couple of things. When price hit support here, what did it do? It shot up very quickly. Again here, we shot up very quickly. Third time it hits support, we move up very quickly. This time, look, it hasn't really done it. We've been drifting along. We've been drifting along the lower parallel. Uh, sorry, the, we've been drifting along the warning line. Haven't had the strength, the ability to move away from it. And it looks as though we're beginning to drift through it to the downside. Just one other thing it might be worth drawing in. A little bit of lower resistance. You can just draw it across there if you want. You can just see we couldn't even get above this resistance here. So resistance has dipped from up here all the way down to there. And that's not a good sign for support, as I'm sure you are aware. Anyway, that's just a very, very look, quick look through some of the charts. I hope it gives a quick insight into my methods and the spread of vehicles that I'm going to be looking to cover. Uh, hopefully, my website is going to be up and running next week, www.forex-analytics.com. Uh, you can always contact me as well via Twitter at Forex Analytics One, that's the number one, or by email support at forex analytics.com. Many thanks indeed.